himself. So I'm talking about Psalm 32 and 2 Chronicles 20. We've already heard the first bit about the song of deliverance that God is like our hiding place. And we saw the ostrich. Then the worship realized we're not ostriches, we're eagles. Amen. We're not chickens. I remember hearing a sermon once. You're not a chicken, you're an eagle. You're not a chicken, you're an eagle. Okay? Just as we come to the hiding place, that's our um, place of prayer and submission to God's will. Not acting in the flesh, because that's going to get you into trouble. When you're in a battle, me and Kerry have uh, realised this. We once heard somebody say this. Don't change in the darkness what God spoke in the light. <clears throat> when everything's going right and it's, everything's light and everything's wonderful, okay, it's great. God spoke to me and doing this. Wonderful. And then when you're up against a battle and when you find yourself in a valley and it gets dark, that's when we say, did God really say that? Where are you gone, God? I thought you were with us. And if you're not careful, you start to change. You say, well, I think it must be something else. It must be something else. It must be something else. It can't be you, Lord. You haven't brought us to the valley of prime bones in Pembrokeshire, have you? You haven't brought us here. It can't be. God, you must have a sense of humour. So what we do in that place, we're not careful. We end up rebelling because we think, ah, God's not in that. No, 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 no. Knowing that that's just a season you're going through, that's just temporary, we realise the kingdom is eternal. All this is going. So that's why our faith must be always growing. So we need to be sowing kingdom seeds because we are kingdom people. Don't change in the darkness what God spoke into the light because if you stay on track through that darkness and you will not be moved and not be budged. Let me tell you, the sun will shine again. The blessings will come again. The answer will come again. And you realise, I'm so glad I just stuck with God. I'm so glad I followed Him. I don't need to keep changing the goalposts. Am I here? Am I there? Am I here? Am I there? Wax on, wax off. You know what I mean? <laughs> battle on, battle off. Keep your focus. So in 2 Chronicles 20, we see this wonderful story of this guy called Jehoshaphat. What a great name. I hope he wasn't bullied at school. Jehoshaphat. He went to Weight Watchers, he was Jehoshaphat. But that's all right. But for today, it's Jehoshaphat. Okay? He was, he was fat with the blessing of God. He was fat on the word of God. He was fat. You know what I mean? P H A T fat. You know what I mean? Fat. Brilliant. And he was totally um, in control and, you know, doing what God wanted to do. And, you know, until one day. In 2 Chronicles 20, it happened after this, verse 1, that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and the others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. In other words, it's getting personal. Didn't say they're coming against Israel. Didn't say they're coming against Judah. No, this is personal. They're coming against you, Jehoshaphat. It's coming against you. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1. When things come against you, what are you going to do? When you're facing a battle, what are you going to do? Where does it drive you? Does it drive you mad, bad, or sad? Or does it drive you to your knees? We're supposed to get better, not bitter. God will work. So it's an amazing account here of the power 
of praise. It's an amazing account of the song of deliverance, of something supernatural, because it was something supernatural was happening here. It was an amazing miracle. So he gets news of these multitudes coming against him. And verse 3, it says this, And Jehoshaphat feared. Darn right he did. He's thinking, okay, they're after me. So he's really after the whole land. So he feared. But the thing is, Jehoshaphat feared God more than he feared man. One thing you have to do in your Christian life, sooner rather than later, is fear God more than fearing man. It says in the word, the fear of man is a snare. You become a people pleaser, you'll please no one, because it's absolutely impossible. And I've heard pastoral ministry describe, as Kerry's dad used to say, how do you describe a pastor? He says, somewhere in between a doormat and a dictator. <laughs> sometimes you get walked over and sometimes you just got to say, that ain't right, I'm calling that out. A doormat and a dictator, somewhere in the middle. I'm neither, but there you are. I am who I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Johnny Brew, there's only one of me. There we are, I can only be myself. Love me or hate me, there we are. He feared God more. Number one, he feared God more than he feared the enemy. And what did he do after verse three? It says he set himself to seek the Lord. You've got to position yourself. Position yourself in that place of prayer. It means you've got to be intentional with your prayers. Because when there's a bigger battle coming and there's a bigger army coming, you need to big up your prayers. When the giants start coming, you need to make your prayers gigantic. He positioned himself. Verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and he set himself to seek the Lord. And then what did he do? What did he do? He called Sandy Hill to have a prayer week. No, no, he, he proclaimed a great fast. That's why I do what I do. I can't make you pray, but at least I can give you some points so you might pray, okay? If I'm calling a prayer week, that means something's up, guys. If you're calling a prayer week, You're sounding the alarm. You're, sound You're sounding the alarm. <laughs> You're sounding. Oh God. Keep taking the tablets. You keep sounding the alarm. See? Oh. If your minister's sounding the alarm. Please, no, something's up, okay? If you say a call to pray, pray! Because it could be the enemy's trying to take us out. Scatter the shepherd. <sighs> Strike the shepherd, scatter the sheep. Pray! And he... I love Jehoshaphat. What a great leader. He didn't expect anything of the people unless he did it himself. <clears throat> Sandy Hill, I don't expect anything of you that I wouldn't do myself. That's why we do tea. That's why we're on the cleaning rotor. I don't expect anything else. Well, you shouldn't be on that. You're a pastor. Yes, I should. Because it's about serving. It's about wiping the crap off people's shoes. It means watching. <laughs> I said that word. Washing feet. Oh, I need to go on a diet. I think I feel like Joseph Fact, I'm out of breath. <laughs> You've got to position yourself before the Lord. He went to the hiding place, he went to the secret place. He called a fast through all of Judah. Verse 4. So Judah gathered together. What do they do? To ask for help 
from the Lord. It says somewhere else, the Lord will give you help from his sanctuary. The Lord will give us help from heaven. We're there to back each other up. We're here to back each other up, not to stab people in the back. Listen to me. We're a house of prayer, not a den of gossip. We're a house of prayer, not a den of gossip. Mm -hmm. The thing with gossip is, it always comes back to the person you're talking about. And if it's me, I love you in the Lord, but I will give you a good slap. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> but for my ministry coordinator who's listening, he knows, of course, I would never do that. Never give a slap. You might get a cold shoulder, but not a frozen shoulder. Because we can't play church anymore. We can't play church anymore. This is the real deal. We're an army. How many of us come today thinking, oh, we'll give it now, have a cup of tea, go home, go to the beach, go shopping, whatever it is, do the gardening, do the scrimming, <laughs> clean my windows, do my laundry, eat chocolate, watch Netflix. All that is great. But did you come for an encounter with the king today? Yes. yes. Hey, give me five. Ooh. Sandy Hill is like no other church, you may have realised. We actually believe Jesus is real and risen. We actually believe that we can be a part. Why am I walking like this? I've been in the ministry. I don't know anymore. I just be me, my little autistic me, that's fine. I just be who God's made me to be. There you are. Let's come and have an encounter with the King. So this is what they did. They asked for help. They asked for help. And we see in verse 5 there, he starts, he stood in the assembly. He got everybody together. And he says, O oh Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? What did he do? What's he saying there? Second point is this. I forgot what point I'm on, but what's the point? I don't know. His confidence was in the Lord. His confidence was in God. Where's your confidence today? Who's it in? The government? <clears throat> your finances? <clears throat> your pastor? <clears throat> no, ultimately it's in God. God is our confidence. He is our full allegiance. His confidence was in God alone. And he says who God is. When we come to prayer, I said it last week, often we treat it like a shopping list and a prayer point. Prayer points are good, they're springboards into, the, into prayer. They're ideas, they're suggestions on how and what to pray for. And also, as you pray, there might be other things that you can pray for. <laughs> but here, he says, no, hang on, we're not just going to going to present the problem, we're actually going to pray and exalt God. And they start by exalting God, telling him who he is. By football, who is he? Who are you? Say, you are you. You're the king. You're the creator of heaven and earth. O oh Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kings of the nations? In other words, my dad's bigger than your dad. You might come against me from three nations, but my dad's bigger than your dad. You wait until the school gate, you won't do that. We'll just get my dad on you. That's what he was saying. Almost not, but kind of. Who is he? <laughs> he is powerful. He's the ruler. Are you not? He was bigging up God. He was exalting God. He was making God ginormous because he is. Because he's not looking at the ginormous armies that are coming against him. He's, he's, he's having some clarification here. He's having some magnification here. He's not to magnify God over his problem. He's magnifying God. And that's what happens when we worship. We magnify God. We make God bigger in our praise and in our worship. And then we come in thinking, yeah, man, mm, mm, I've had my boldness Fixed today. I'm going, I walked in like a chicken, but I'm going out like an eagle. And God bless the ostriches. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? The exalted God. 
And in verse 12, I love his honesty. See, this is humility. He said, I have a plan. I know what's happening. When I'm in charge, everything will change. What did he say? We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. It's okay to not know the next thing. Because that's where you don't change in the darkness what God spoke in the light. You trust him. When I went helicopter flying once, when I was 21, I flew a helicopter once. Not as a job, but I had to go in controls. It makes me sound great when I say that. But uh, he explained the panels. And he explained, you could just fly, if the weather's really bad, you could just fly on the instruments. The instruments will get you to where you go. You've got to keep your eyes on the instruments. You might not be able to see in front of you, but you know what's west, north, south, east, and west. You've got the coordinates. You will get to where you need to be. You're flying blind. I don't want to fly blind. No, 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 no. I don't want to fly blind. No, 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 no. Give me clear skies. Get, help me see where I'm going, and we go there. Sometimes with the Lord, it's like we're flying blind sometimes. He didn't know what to do. The instruments are not working. The fog is there. Man, where are we going? Oh, not Pembrokeshire. Yes. <laughs> we don't know what to do, but our eyes on you. And I love this. This totally touched my heart. Verse 13. Everyone was included. Everyone was included. Now all Judah, verse 13, with their little ones. Oh, <laughs> their wives and their children. They stood before the Lord. See, that is, you want a text, you want a scripture for all age worship? There it is. They all stood together. Does it say in Psalm 8? Two, from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise. Why? To silence the foe of the avenger. I loved it when little Joel came up with his flag. He had the blue flag. I thought, oh yeah, prophecy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come out with the red flag. It's like, yes, the blood of Jesus. You see, we need those childlike hearts before God. But everyone was included here. Everyone all of Judah, they were all there. And then what happens after they prayed? God raises up a prophetic word. Like in our worship today, we had a, we had a couple of songs. And it was lovely. God is a warrior, so don't be a warrior. I thought, oh, God, that's so clever, that's amazing. I don't remember that, write that one down, it's good, isn't it? See, don't be a warrior. That meant something to somebody today. It's God saying, this is what I'm doing. Don't be a warrior, I'm your warrior. But what happened? God raises up Jehaziel, who gives his lineage, and he rises up in front of everybody to give the word of the Lord. So they don't know what to do. Everybody's fasting and praying. Everybody's included. They're flying blind, not sure what to do. And Jehazahel, verse 15 and 14 and 15, says, Do not be afraid. <clears throat> Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For the battle is not yours, but God's. If you're in a battle today... No, the battle is not yours. You're not facing the giant alone. You're not facing the problem alone. God is with you. But if you keep your priorities right, you could try and be a fixer. Oh, they told us about that in college. In your pastoral ministry, don't try and be a fixer. Don't try and fix people. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Don't be a fixer. Don't have a Messiah complex. You are not the Messiah. Oh yes, thank you Lord, I'm not Jesus. That's right. I'm not going to have a Messiah complex and try to save the whole world next week. Mm -hmm. Right? Keep it real. Stop trying to fix people. Stop trying to fix your own circumstance or situation like you're helping God a little bit with the clay. And he says, no, I'm the potter. You're the clay. He's the one who molds us. He doesn't need your help. I just help you a little bit. 
I just, I like this position, Lord. It can make me like, I want to be like this, Lord. He said, no. He, he molds us to who he wants to be. And if you're Lord, you like this. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be who God's made you to be. you got to be who God's made you to be. So they had instructions. Don't be afraid. The battle is not yours, but God's. He knows what he's doing. He does not need your manipulation to help him. you just got to do what he says. And sometimes that is nothing about from praise and prayer. Lord, I'm waiting on it. What are you going to do, brother? I'm waiting on it. Okay, but you need to be doing I'm waiting on God. It's the best thing you can do. But don't use prayer as an excuse. Like you don't want to say yes, you say, I'll pray about it. So he said, why don't you do this? Oh, I pray about it. And you go away. You've got no intention to pray about it. And it's just like, what I mean is, no. <laughs> you see, the double-minded man will not stand. Okay? Let's not be double-minded. Okay? Let's just be, just, I, won't, I won't pray about it. We're actually, no, that's not what the Lord is speaking to me. Just tell the truth. No, sorry. No, sorry. I can't take that on right now. No, sorry. I'd love to, but that's a good one. I'd love to, but what a great idea. Why don't you do it? It's your idea. Really? Pass the buck. Great. <laughs> don't be afraid, verse 15. And it goes on. Don't be afraid or dismayed because it's great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. Then God gave them intel. I love this. God gave them intel. He, he told them where they're going to be, at what time, so they're going to have eyes on. They're down by the valley. Eyes on, eyes on. They're down by there. So they went down by there. Verse 17. By the way, you will not need to fight in this battle. Did we hear correctly from God? How often we do that? <laughs> Did we really hear? You go first, you go first. You go first, I'm not sure if we heard properly. You go first. No, 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 I'm going to go You go first. You, you, you have the word of the Lord. You will not need to fight. There's three armies coming against them. He said, they've got the intel where there's going to be. They're going to be in the valley. They're going to be in the valley. But you won't need to fight. <laughs> what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do when they come for you, bad boys, bad boys? What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Wait. Now this gets ridiculous. They can hear the thunder of the footstep. I oh, I know the blood of an Englishman. They can wow, they can hear them over the hill, the bagpipes in that back house. They can hear the marching drums in that marching drums. Dun, 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 dun. In front of their knees are knocking. We ain't gonna fight. We're gonna stand. It's the battle. It's the Lord's. It's not ours. It's not ours. It's the Lord's. I put my best. I'm not afraid. Stance. We shall not be moved. But really, your knees are knocking and you're shaking. You only need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Oh, God is with us. Yes, that's why we can stand still. We have to be patient. I'm not good at that, Kerry, am I? I'm getting better. Praise the Lord. I'm getting better. Seven years I've been minister of this church. You think if you count the lay pastor there as well. Seven long years from 2017 when I had my first induction. And then the ministerial recognition board. Preach in different places. They tell you to stretch and say, yeah, you can preach. And then you can go. And then you have interviews with this one. And interviews with that one. Then you go to college for three long years. And then you finish college. Mark Owen, I love you. Um, and then afterwards, you're on probation for three years. I'm just coming out of that now. But I had to be patient. Because unless the Lord builds the house, we labour 
in vain. Never rush what God wants you to build. Or you'll have a copy and not a, an original. You'll have what is of you instead of what is of God. I had to learn that lesson many years ago, but thank God I did. Let God build the house. You've got to wait for the Lord. So what happened? The response is this. He said, do not fear or be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them for the Lord is with you. Verse 17. Verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed down to the Lord and they worshipped. They worshipped at the beginning of the battle and they're going to worship in the middle of the battle but they're going to worship at the end of their battle. So then they were bowed down and that is the heart of humility. And then the Korotites and them stood up with a loud voice and gave the high praises of God. Two ways to interpret that verse. In that holy moment before the Lord and they were worshipping, they were face down before the Lord. Holy moment. And then the Korotites get up and start making a noise. It's kind of like, he's irreverent. So you can see that as being a problem. Or you can see it as actually after the worship. And the things start building up in the worship, don't they? And you start getting closer to God in the worship. It could be that it went into high praise. It could be. Depends how you interpret that verse. But whatever they did, they worshipped and they praised anyway. They had to believe in the word of God and their response was humility, worship, submission. They had the fear of the Lord, whatever point I was on. That's the other one. The fear of the Lord. They bowed down. They released the fragrance of their worship to the Lord God. Wow. The high praises of God are in our mouth. And with a double-edged sword in our hands. Okay, verse 20, we're coming to the end. So they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. We need the word of the Lord, even in these days. But you've got to believe. Yes, they had the word. Yes, they bigged up who God is. And may exalted him, because he's bigger than their problems. They've been together in submission, humility, and the fear of the Lord. Now God's saying, now's the day. Get up early and go down. But whatever you do, it's got to be faith. You've got to go in faith. You have to believe. Not going down half hard to think of what I hope God comes through today. I hope God comes through today. You know what I mean, Bridge? You know I, mean? I hope God comes through in it. Like, what if he doesn't like in it? You know what I mean? It's like, no. Bridget says, don't be silly, John. Have faith. Believe. <laughs> Have faith. Believe. And he does something weird. Verse 21. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the Lord for the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army. God put the musicians and the singers in front of the army. That's one way to kill the band, isn't it? One way to get rid of the musicians. Send them first. But no. That's our praise and our worship. The praise and the worship of God went first at the head of the army. See, this is Judah. Judah means praise. And these are God's people. So Judah means praise. And they're marching towards the enemy, believing in God that they won't have to fight. And instead of, instead of spears and shields and things, they have lyres and harps and drums and stuff. And they start saying, they lay down the beat, you know, yeah, praise the Lord for his love of endurance forever. They start praising the Lord in whatever style it was they were in. Probably in a minor key. 
Probably E minor. E minor is a great chord, isn't it? E minor. E minor is a good chord. E minor. A minor is quite nice as well. C minor. That's what they are. Minor chord. But it's like it had the intenseness on it. That song we sang today, My Two Warrior, was intense. I know it was. I looked at some of your faces. You're like, okay. But it has power to it. Because God's going ahead. And the army's going out. But the musicians are at the front. They're saying, praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. And they kept on saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it. See, in the praise and the worship, God was going to get the victory. So what happened? Verse 22. Now, when they began to sing and to praise. Stop. There's a difference between singing and praising. You can come to church, you can sing worship songs. Or you can come to church, you can worship with worship songs. You can come to church, you can sing hymns, or you can come to church and actually worship the Lord with hymns. Okay? With hymns, songs. That's why it says in Colossians and Ephesians, sing to each other with songs, hymns, and spirituals. Sing to one another. We had that today. We go, what's that chorus being going? Well, you had something, you had something. It was lovely. And the word of the Lord and beautiful voices. It's like a cacophony of sound. A symphony pleasing to Jesus. Because God's in the midst of us. God's in the midst of us. There's a difference between singing and praising. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, what did the Lord do? Verse 22. The Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So they come to the top of the hill, expecting to see a great big army, while they're saying, praise the Lord, his love been just forever. Praise the Lord for his love and just forever. Huh, huh. They look and they go, the army's dead. They've already defeated. God did it in the battle what they couldn't do. See, the battle was never theirs. God says, it is mine, but look what I have done. Okay, our battle is not people. Our battle is the principalities and the powers. It's evil ruling spirits. It's a very real war. And God told me this week, just as there's wars increasing on the earth, the Lord said to me, he said, son, he said, know that the war against the saints is starting to grow intense. You're going to see more drama in the church. You're going to see more stuff going on because, I tell you, somebody's got a demon, they don't have it cast out, it's going to cause some problems. Right? Because the war in the saints has already begun. But God also told me this week, the remedy is in the melody. The remedy for these people was in the melody of their praise. In the melody of their praise, God's remedy came down. God's answer was there. God dealt with the thing and took out the enemy. And when they expected an army, as I say, in praise of the Lord, there's love and just forever. They were there. They were already dead. They were already defeated. Then it took three days for them to take all the plunder and all the treasure and all the spoils of war as they did. Three days. Not only did God defeat the enemy, everything the enemy had stolen came to be theirs. Then what did they do? They assembled in the valley. Oh, the valley. The valley of battle, the valley of darkness. The valley of battle became a valley of blessing. A place of battle become a place of of blessing. That's why it's called Baraka. Verse 28. And on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Baraka, for they blessed the Lord. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of that place was called the valley, valley of Baraka until this day. Baraka means blessing, place of blessing, place of praise. Now what did they do to finish? 
Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. They were now overcomers, like it says in Romans. We are more conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Jesus has defeated the enemy for our sake. He, he was three days. We thought it was, what's happening there? And on the third day he rose. And he's from the dead. And he's given us his blessing. And he calls you and me conquerors. But God wants your praise. So next time you face a battle, God wants to surround you with those songs of deliverance. Do the opposite to what the flesh wants you to do. Well, I'm just in that place. I'm just going to watch Netflix. I'm just going to find the best friend and moan about my problems. I'm going to talk about the pastor. I don't like the pastor. Stop it in back. <laughs> What are you having for dinner? Pasta. <laughs> Bolognese International. <sighs> Please don't have me for dinner. I'm trying my best. <laughs> God sent confusion into the enemy's camp. When we praise and we worship, God sends confusion to the enemy's camp. So if the worship and praise gets a bit intense, know that don't switch off. <laughs> Go and read the newsletter. Oh. Go pretend to got a word from the Lord and just like uh, look at the look at the notes about Genesis. Look look at the alphabet. Look at look at uh, look at the, the index and think. Oh, yeah, I don't know. And look all spiritual and you're zoning out, thinking, oh, there they go again. No, it's a war. You see, you've got to discern in these days. You've got to discern spiritually. That means we need to grow in the gifts of the Spirit Church. We need more of the Holy Spirit. I need more discernment because the enemy is crafty. The enemy is cunning. He might come in looking really good, thinking I'm really spiritual, baby. Yeah, yeah. But actually, they're a, a, a wicked, a bon, a, a bon, a bon, a bon, not a bon, a, bon, a, bon, a wicked thing. They're a wicked thing. Abomination. That's it. Abomination before God. We need to know the difference. So put your armor on. I preached for 37 minutes, no wonder you're looking bored. Put your armour on. The battle is going to grow more intense these days. But we need to stay holy and stay humble and know that the remedy is in the melody. And that's praise. But that comes from a heart of humility and intimacy with Jesus, who is the King of Kling Kings. Kings? Kings. King of Kings, not Klingons. Kings. King of Kings. Not take film, kings. He's the king of kings. The secret place is the best place. That's where the keys will come. That's where the instruction will come. That's where the best songs will come. That's where the song of healing. You can pray for somebody. Instead of praying for somebody, you sing over them. Oh, I love you, Malcolm. <laughs> oh, he's got a man up to your own heart. Oh, God's going to do some things in your life. So to sing over people. If you can't sing, then hum, hum holy, and uh, just, just release the word of the Lord, because churches, people are chained into the pew. I visit places sometimes, I preach in different places, and I think, God help them. <laughs> There's no hope for this church. They sit there week after week, they're dead. There's no hope. There's no minister. There's no vision. When you come down with a spoon, I'll we'll just give you some scripture. Give you this. I'll bless you. It's like it's sad. We're supposed to be a church on fire. We're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be seeing breakthroughs in our lives. What I love about Jehoshaphat is, on the way home, back to Jerusalem, it says in our last verse, they took up the harps and the lyres and the tambourines. And as they went to Jerusalem, they had the biggest party. Better than an open mic now. They had all the instruments. They were having a hoedown, a showdown, a good old knees up. They were having a great time, praising the Lord. After the battle, don't forget to thank Jesus. Because he gave you the battle. Why? The battle is his. It's his. It ain't yours. 
to Jesus. Thank you for the gift of humour. Because you peel back the layers when we laugh and then boom, the, the, the sword of your word oh, gets us and sets us free. So I pray for all who hear this message on YouTube or wherever. Lord, you are blessed whoever's listening today. We are blessed today not to give up, not to change in the darkness what we spoke in the light. But we will put our praises on that every Sunday will come ready to do warfare. Because you are the mighty warrior. And according to Psalm Isaiah 42, you are like a mighty man, 41. A mighty man raising the battle cry because the battle belongs to you. Help us to grow in the things of the Spirit. Would you bless, Lord, our relationship with you? I bless people's, our members' relationship with you. May they grow closer to you, more in love with you. And may they start experiencing the Holy Spirit, encountering you in new ways. Let them just be hearing your voice with greater clarity, clarity and revelation. More than they ever have done in their lives. Lord Jesus, because you're doing a new thing. And there's a brand new spring. And the battle belongs to the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen. amen.